Greetings friends, Jollis Paul here. In this video, I'm gonna be talking about the keepsakes. Now, I'm going to divide them up into different categories, those being uh, defensive, flexible, aggressive or offensive focused, run shaping and all in. And that should cover every keepsake. In this video, we'll be talking about the defensive and the flexible keepsakes and what I think of them, where I use them, what they're useful for, in my opinion, and then generally how I rate them. In the interest of time, I may not talk about some of the keepsakes as much as others, particularly if they're lower tiered in my opinion or if I don't use them. So let's go ahead and get started with uh, the defensive keepsakes, starting with Cerberus's Collar. Cerberus's Collar, Old Spike Collar, gives you 50 life uh, to your life total. This is not a very good effect. Maybe at the beginning of the game when you don't have tough skin from the mirror or um, some other benefits or you're still learning, it might be beneficial to get that health. But generally speaking, there are much better options to level up first to give you more benefit than Cerberus's Collar. C tier, I wouldn't use it. Next, Myrmidon Bracer. Take negative 30% damage from the front, but take plus 10% from the back. This is another defensive keepsake that I don't find to be particularly amazing. 30% damage reduction is good, but you're not guaranteed to be only hit from the front. In fact, I find it kind of chaotic, especially with certain weapons. I don't know if I'm going to get hit from the back or the front because I'm dashing around a lot. So I don't find this to be reliable mitigation. And there are other things that are defensive that I would rather have. I should note that in defensive keepsakes, the way that I think of them typically is how can they save me when things go, go poorly. I rarely start a run with defensive keepsakes on thinking I'm gonna be defensive. I always think about it like, okay, we're at that point and I've lost some death defiances and my health is low, what can I do to save the run? And so I'm be thinking about it in terms of that as well. Myrmidon Bracer is not something that I'd put on when I was in a bad situation because you've got that, that risk of taking more damage from behind. So if the final boss hits me with a, a large attack, that's going to hurt even more and could potentially uh, kill me. And I don't like that. So C tier on Myrmidon Bracer. Useful, can be useful, but I wouldn't pick it. Okay, Harpy Feather Duster, 6% chance get to get health items from urns. This actually does provide quite a bit of bonus health, and that's beneficial in a couple ways. Obviously, if you're taking a lot of damage, you want to heal. And so having the Harpy Feather Duster is a way for you to heal without spending gold, which is usually how you get your health back, like going into the Well of Charon or going to Charon's shops to heal yourself. And so this provides that, that benefit without you having to spend money. That being said, it does take a while for you to run around and smash pots. And so I don't love it for that reason, but it should be noted that it is a lot of healing. I give it a solid A tier. Next, Lucky Tooth. Automatically restored 100 life when your di uh, life total is depleted. This is a great defensive keepsake. This one is great because it's perfect for the oh, oh shoot moments in the game where you've lost all your death defiances and you're about to go into sticks and you really want to make it through as far as you can. This can be the thing that saves you. And I put it on many, many times going into different acts you know, hoping to stay alive just that little bit longer. It should be noted that it can't be restored once you've lost it, and once you take it off, um, you no longer have the keepsake. So it only benefits you while you're wearing the keepsake. So Lucky Tooth, I rate as an S for sure, because it provides that uh, oh, oh darn, oh, oh no benefit that, that you want in a defensive keepsake. Next, we have the Evergreen Acorn. In the final encounter in each underworld region, take zero damage the first five times foes hit you. This is a great example of a keepsake where if you're struggling in a boss fight, if you're struggling to get through a certain act, this can be a really, really nice keepsake to wear to help you get just push past that really difficult fight. So I rate this very highly. I often wear it for the final boss battle because I often take you know big swipes from him and he's got very heavy hitting blows. So this keepsake is very beneficial. It should be noted though that the adds that are summoned in a boss fight will also take away charges. It's not just when the boss hits you. So you might be blocking a five damage hit from an enemy, which is a real bummer because um, you only have five charges. Uh, it's, it's very, very nice, but provides no other benefit yeah, in, in that biome. It's only for the final boss battle. So keep that in mind. S tier for sure. And then Broken Spear Point, after taking damage, become impervious to damage for one and a half seconds, refreshing every sec after seven seconds. 
this is actually a, quite a lot of mitigation um, and especially beneficial when you're going into Styx. Styx has poison damage and lasers, both of which are very small amounts of damage, but very quickly accumulating. And so if you take that first single point of damage from the laser, suddenly you've got a, a, a second and a half to get out of the way of the laser to kill the enemy that's, that's hurting you, or in the case of poison, go and cure yourself. Very, very nice to have and has saved me in sticks quite a few times. I highly recommend it if you are having trouble with just the regular part of sticks. Just the poison is getting you every time, the lasers are getting you. It's, it's a very frustrating act to move through and this can be the thing that really helps you get through it. So Broken Spear Point I rate as an S tier item it's just really nice to slap on for very specific purposes. Um, you don't need to wear it all run, but that some, of the, some of the final areas of the game, it can be really, really great. Next, we're going to talk about the flexible keepsakes in the game. Bone Hourglass items from the Well of Charon have a duration increase of eight encounters. This is a huge benefit. If you look at a lot of the items that you can get from Well of Charon, they last anywhere between three to six encounters and adding eight encounters can make, I mean, so you have a, suddenly you have a 14 encounter Well of Charon item. It's, it's incredible because 14, 14 encounters is like a biome and a half, really, if you think about it. So Bone Hourglass provides some of the best benefit in the game for your obols that you want to spend. And the, a lot of the Well of Charon items are just very, very powerful. You've got your jerkies, which will help your attack and special based builds. You've got Braid of Atlas, which is great for your cast build, and Pr Promethean Stone. You've got healing items that suddenly you are getting tons of health and don't really need to worry as much. Your, your money goes a lot longer with the Bone Hourglass, which is just amazing. It should be noted too that Well of Charon items can stack, so you can get multiple jerkies and your damage could just go through the roof. Healing as well, it works the same way it stacks. So this item is S tier, it might be one of the best keepsakes in the game, if not the best in terms of just raw power, right? Like the, the amount that it can empower your run. So I, I like this one a lot, S tier. Next we have Chthonic Coin Purse. Receive 150 gold to spend as I please once per escape attempt. The great thing about this one is you put it on once and you have the money. If you take off the Chthonic Coin Purse in, this, in the biome after you put it on, you do not lose 150 gold. You just get that 150 gold. So it's a super flexible keepsake, provides that gold, which is used for damage. It could be used for healing. It could be used to you know, upgrade your boons. It can be used for a lot of different things. So I, I think it's a great one. It's a great one for beginners because gold lets you heal yourself a lot, which is very beneficial. I rate this as S tier as well. Very, very nice option to choose. Next, we have the Cosmic Egg. Enter Chaos Gates without losing health, and blessings from Chaos have a 40% chance to be rare or better. This one is, is great, not necessarily for entering Chaos Gates without losing health, that's nice, but the 40% chance to have rare or better Chaos Boons is fantastic. So Chaos Boons are, are boons that can buff your abilities beyond what the normal boons uh, that you get would do. So you can have uh, an Aphrodite attack boon that gives you 110% bonus damage, you know, maybe it's palmed up a little bit, but you can also get a Cosmic Egg boon that buffs your attack damage by another 66%, and you can get more than one of those, so you can get multiple attack boons. You can really, really pump your damage up quite a bit through Chaos Gates. He benefits just about every type of run that you can think of. He provides health, he provides money, he provides bonus darkness, so if you're farming for darkness, he's great. He provides cast stones, Permanent cast stones, he's one of the only ways to get, or it is it is one of the only ways to get cast stones in the game. Cast damage, it's amazing. Dash attack, the only type of run that it really doesn't benefit would be curse-based runs. So hangover runs, doom runs, lightning, it doesn't affect lightning. So you want to be thinking about that when you're picking this. So it might be less beneficial in some builds, but honestly, it's amazing. So chaos effects are very, very beneficial. However, this, the, the Cosmic Egg, I don't know that it does enough uh, as a keepsake, honestly. It doesn't guarantee any Chaos Gates. It does take away the health penalty and it has a chance to be rare or better. Whether that is worth it or not, I'm not sure. So I'm gonna rate this at about a B tier, I think. You, you should be going in Chaos Gates, but the Cosmic Egg by itself probably isn't the best thing ever. 
So the next two, if you don't want to be spoiled on, these are some of the keepsakes that are hardest to find that you're required to have beaten the game, have gotten to the end of the game a number of times, and even beyond the, the final credits of the game to find these. So if you don't want to be spoiled on these, now is the time to go. We'll see you in a minute. I'll leave a timestamp below of what you should click to if you want to skip this. Palm Blossom. This comes from Persephone. Every four encounters gain a random palm level. So this is especially good for like cast builds or curse based builds where your palms do even more benefit. A lot of times if you're on a percentage based build for your attack or your special, it's going to provide less benefit. So for instance, like the, I think going from level five Artemis attack boon to level six Artemis attack boon, I think it probably only gives you like three or 4% bonus percentage damage, which is really not worth it, right? Like you should palm something else at that point. It's okay, it's okay, but it's not gonna, it's not as much as like, if you do it on a cast or on Dionysus hangover effect, it's going to do a lot more bonus damage with a palm. So palm blossom, excellent for those curse based or cast based builds, not so much for attack or special percentage based. Next is the Sigil of the Dead. Now you might be saying, hey, this is not a flexible item. This is <laughs> this is specifically damage or this is specifically defensive. And I, I would I would say that it's actually it's both, right? Because it makes you invisible and you can you get bonus damage and movement speed while you're invisible. It's kind of got benefits of both. It's a little bit of a weird duck. It also fills your call slot, so you can't pick up any other calls if you have the Sigil of the Dead. Your call becomes Hades' aid, which makes you invisible. Your god gauge starts at 30% full. It doesn't tell the whole story because you do get bonus movement speed and you get bonus damage for your first hit. So when you're invisible, you are invisible until you do your first attack and then you become visible and targetable again. But if you if you use your call at max percentage, then suddenly you become unseen, which means that you can attack, you can do everything that you normally do for five seconds, you're untargetable during that time. So at max percentage, it's quite nice. However, it takes your call slot. So I feel, I feel conflicted about this one. I feel like I do need to test it more, and I'm sure that there are some really wonderful things that someone could do with it. You know, in the right hands, it could be amazing. But the fact that it takes away my call slot it seems like an opportunity cost. Like you already have an opportunity cost from putting a, you know, choosing a specific keepsake over another. And then you also take away your call slot. It, it feels like too much to give up for this effect. I do like on being unseen, but here's the thing. Being invisible only affects you for a little while. And then if you want to use the unseen effect at 100%, that doesn't happen in most rooms, right? Usually that's in a champ room or a boss room. It doesn't seem to be beneficial for a lot of the other parts of the game. For that reason, I kind of rate it a little bit lower than, than maybe some of the other ones. It's, I'd say it's like high B tier maybe because of the opportunity cost and just it's kind of niche uh, potential. You don't really get to use some of the more powerful abilities. The calls are some of the more powerful things in the game and its effect is not, I wouldn't even say it's as good as a lot of the other calls in the game. So let me know in the comments if you agree, if you disagree. I'm curious what you think of all this and I hope that uh, we can have a good healthy discussion. If you like this video, please give it a like that helps it get seen by people. And then if you wanna see more videos from me, subscribe, I do lots of runs and I do lots of guide videos for Hades. I love the game and I've been playing since it came out in early access. So I got a little bit of time in there. So friends, We'll catch you in the next one. Take it easy.